back to Radio Night Live from New York. Here's Kevin McCullough. Well, it's uh, the Friday of Labor Day weekend, and Christine Nicholas, as I always think about this weekend, this is that weekend where the U.S. Open really just takes front and center stage of sports. It has no competition. The NFL has this kind of dead week before the regular season begins. Baseball, you know, it's still going on, but it's kind of just there all summer. Um, and you really have the opportunity to just narrow in on this, this one spectacular event uh, each year. And it's even more special this year because Serena Williams has announced uh, in the women's division this is her final, you know, last hurrah. And, of course, uh, she, she wants to do her evolution. She, she's going to be doing other things. That's, but that's it. Stay with tennis. <laughs> uh, but the but the idea that this could be really historic and a lot of fun kind of captured our imagination last week. So we said, hey, let's let's talk some some tennis this week. And I want you to introduce us to Skip Hartman. Well, I, you know, had the pleasure of meeting Skip. Uh, through Mayor Dinkins, who is a board member on the Broadway Association. And, you know, I just think of when you think of tennis in New York, Labor Day weekend, uh, you think of um, obviously the U.S. Open, but you also think of um, that have been through the Parks Department, through the program of the tennis. It used to be called the the New York Junior Tennis League. Um, Skip Hartman was the founder of that organization. I have seen it grow through the years. It's just a spectacular opportunity for young people to get involved with a life sport, something that will stay with them uh, for life. Um, So I thought it would be wonderful to have Skip Hartman on because, you know, I looked at the videos of Serena Williams when she won the U.S. Open at 17 years old and what an yeah. inspiration that must have been for other youngsters. So, Skip Hartman, welcome to Radio Night Live. We thank you for your service for so many years. And I'm curious, Skip, you know, what made you want to start um, the, the Junior Tennis League, but now called Learning, right? And you also changed the name recently. So tell us a little bit about uh, the, the origins. Well, in 1970, I, I did the first indoor tennis concession with the city of New York in Mulally Park next to Yankee Stadium. And since I was using public land, uh, it, it was a, apparent to me for self-serving reasons that it would be good to do something for the community. And, and it just so happened that Arthur Ashe with Charlie Passarell and a fellow by the name of Sheridan Snyder started the, the this inner city tennis program that they called the National Junior Tennis League, hmm. and uh, they hired a friend of mine to run it. In the and, and he came to me and asked if I would sponsor program uh, that summer, the summer of 1970. I did. I hired Sidney Llewellyn, who was Althea Gibson's coach, hmm. and who worked at the Harlem Armory across the river from Yankee Stadium. And we launched the program that summer, and so many children came out. It was unbelievable how many kids came out for it. And it was, and it, it was just such a fabulous uh, response that uh, I got hooked and uh, uh, thought, you know, this is really something good. Uh, I guess the other factor is that in my own life, Tennis has been a big uh, source of uh, satisfaction. It's helped me earn money. It's uh, my my first job that helped pay for some of my education uh, was teaching tennis at a club. Uh, Of course, making the high school team and then the college varsity. I I made a lot of friends and got a lot of satisfaction from that. And then, uh, and then later on, I, I practiced law for a little while and went into, and saw the opportunity to go into the tennis business. So, so it's been a huge part of my life. And I think, you know, anytime you can give some opportunity to a young person, uh, if they know tennis, it will help. It could help them take advantage of that opportunity. So I think, I think, uh, I think it's a really good activity to expose young people to, and the culture of tennis has always stressed uh, being educated. Most people who play tennis have either a trade or going to college. And uh, uh, so if someone gets involved in tennis, you don't have to tell them to get educated. They just see that it's something that everybody's doing and they do it. Hmm. Uh, And it's just there's so many aspects of the sport that positively impact young people. So the combination of 
my belief in that and of course Arthur the inspiration from Arthur Ashe and his support yeah. for the program is how I got started hmm. Skip, I got to think, we're speaking with Skip Hartman of uh, what's now called learning, but was the New York Junior Tennis League. I have to think that not everybody is cut out to work with young people, and yet it was something that you embraced fairly quickly and decided that you kind of liked it. What was it about dealing with that generation that said, uh, this is what I'm supposed to do? Oh, I maybe I'm going to be repetitive here. I, I, I'm not the greatest tennis coach in the world, and I may not even be the – I have a, a daughter and a grandson. I may not even be the best father in the world. Uh, but, uh, you know, I certainly know when something is, is, is positively impacting young people. Hmm. Uh, and I'm a good observer, and I'm not a bad organizer. So uh, if, if I can't be the teacher who – who, who personally and directly inspires or engages the young person, uh, maybe second best is to organize a group of people who can who do can that. Who can do that, yeah. Very cool. And I want to know how it was working with Arthur Ashe. I mean, you know, growing up, he was such a huge part of the New York tennis culture. and, and But, you know, you got to know him, and he did something always to give back for the kids. So... What was that like? Well, Arthur was a, a reserve person uh, in terms of his personality. He wasn't a, a shouter or a yeller. <laughs> Unlike the kids uh, from Queens, right? The other kids. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, he was very thoughtful. And, uh, of course, he settled in New York later in his life. He traveled around the world as a player for many years. But he, you know, and, and he wrote a wonderful book. Uh, and, and, and one of the things he uh, is quoted often for saying is, you know, start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Hmm. And uh, Arthur um, uh, carried that message to people all over the world, especially young people. Uh, when he lived in New York, I got to know him and Jeannie, uh, his wife, much better. Uh, which was sort of the last 10 or 15 years of his life. And he was always available to make appearances. Uh, there was never a business agent involved or anything like that. He, you know, if his schedule at all permitted him to come to a school and do a clinic or talk to the children. And the same thing might be is true of Jean, Jeannie, his wife, who was very eloquent. Uh, they just, I think they felt the same way I always felt that this is a great activity to, to bring to children, and the more you can do it, the, the more positive uh, things you're going to accomplish in your life. Yeah. But he's a, a, a really a very wonderful, humble person. That's just some of uh, Skip Hartman's thoughts on the uh, late Arthur Ashe, and of course the stadium that bears his name will uh, feature the uh, very best in the tennis world of tennis over the next several days, and they will be working their way to crowning a uh, new champion in the men's and women's division this year. Will Serena Williams take it home? Let's ask Skip Hartman when we come back and talk a little bit more about how the game has changed uh, in the next few minutes. We're glad you're with us. It's Radio Night Live. This is our fun Friday edition, and uh, we're coming right back from New York. Stay here. From New York, it's Radio Night Live with Kevin McCullough. It was in 2013 that uh, the U.S. Tennis Association honored our guest with its National Junior Tennis and Learning Founders Service Award for 40 years of tireless efforts to grow junior tennis programs in New York City and around the country, including something like this, Christine, 3 million participant hours of year-round programs, 500,000 hours of free community tennis in 100% of the New York City Council districts, and 75,000 kids reached through tennis training for PE instructors in all five boroughs. I mean, I'm getting tired just reading those stats, much less putting in those hours, but that's all due to the efforts of Skip Hartman, who is our uh, featured guest tonight, and so honored to have him with us. Um, Skip, just before we went to the break, I kind of teased the... Um, the the u.s opens uh, you know return to the city this year but you've seen a lot of tennis um how do you rank someone like serena williams when you're talking about the greats of people like arthur ash and 
McEnroe and Borg and, you know, all, all of them through the years. Where does she where does she fall on the scale of really, truly great players in your mind? Well, she's she's certainly for women's tennis, the greatest of all time. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, uh, Margaret Court was great, but there weren't as many people playing tennis when Margaret Court played. And the competition wasn't nearly as keen because there was no money in the sport then. Yeah. Now tennis is big business. What about Martina? The best best women athletes uh, all compete. Martina was great, but she did never accomplish the number of grand slams. That's uh, true. Serena has. And uh, uh, I'd say Martina, even as a singles player, never played as long a career. I mean, it's remarkable. Most women, Martina is an exception, but most women players, the longest you see them playing is 15 years, and that's really long. Uh, most of them are five years or 10 years, and that's it as a career. Some of the great ones were three or four years. Serena, uh, what is it now? 17, she, it's 20, 23 years, and wow. she's still competing at she the does. highest level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what a remarkable athlete she right. is. And, well, and how uh, much do you associate that with her early start? Speaking of your specific kind of uh, calling in life, she started very well, young. Her as dad an, was... Look, as, as an athlete, Kevin, uh, I, I associate it with her genes, <laughs> her father <laughs> and her mother. <laughs> I mean, you don't become that great an athlete without some very good genes. Uh, and but, but sure, uh, you know, and, and dedication, you know, because we all know the story of, of Richard and how he really pushed that those girls. And early on, people were questioning it. They were wondering, was it too much? Is he too harsh on them? But look at what it has resulted in. And to watch the two um, play last night together, Venus and Serena, it was really, truly beautiful. I know they didn't win, but they played really well. And um, and they played with grace. It was really nice to see. Nice and they're they're so poised, they're so they they they're so they, they're great ambassadors for for this country, for the sport, for their race. I mean, uh, you know, Serena's had her moments where she's lost her temper, uh, but we all do, and uh, it's just <laughs> we don't always do it on camera, but <laughs> but it happens to everyone at different points in their lives, and, and I think she's. She's been remarkable. She's got a, a lovely child. She's got a nice, it's, it seems like a wonderful husband. Uh, and she's still competing at, at the very highest levels of the game. I mean, who's ever done anything like that? No right. one. Well, I remember yeah. when Jimmy Connors went late into the U.S. Open when he was, I think, 41 or... Uh, and he, was he was 39. He was 39. Okay, well, but, she's... But it was 40. electric. You were, you, <laughs> it was you're electric. so right. It was electric. And actually, we've been talking uh, among us here that... that you know, the last time it was as electric as it is now with Serena each time she plays was when Jimmy made that run to the semifinals. Yeah. And I think uh, everyone, the drama of it all, everyone, you, you know, really is rooting for somebody who's working, you know, you know well, it a is person the 40, year, 40 years old. I mean, it, you know, it is definitely the hottest ticket in town, probably the most expensive ticket in town. I read today that some tickets were fetching for forty thousand dollars. Now, forty thousand. That is. Wow, that's amazing. Yes. I think that's that maybe also, you know. I think that's. A, I, I, I'm not sure that's <laughs> accurate, but, but, but certainly several thousands of dollars for a ticket that, right. you know, might cost four hundred dollars uh, if you bought it at the box office. Yeah. <laughs> But, well, but if you watch it on TV, I got to say ESPN's coverage has been quite great and you get to see it up close uh, and it, it really is wonderful. And I believe that they had over three and a half million people watching it last night, which uh, they were very impressed with their ratings. Well, every win she gets, it's that's going it to it's right multiply now, it's exponentially soon. and it's going to be layer upon layer of new viewers uh, tuning in every every uh, point she wins from here on. Skip Hartman, thanks for your time tonight. We really appreciate you being with us. Thank you, Kevin. And you thank you, it. Christine.